Hey guys, Sonny Shot here. We're back with a brand new video today. We're going to be going over the Season 6 patch notes for Apex Legends. So let's jump right into it. Uh, season Rembrandt. Ram Rembrandt. Yeah, Rembrandt, right? Yeah, type it onto it. Okay, map update your world's edge. Remember, by things you need to discover world's edge. You're up to something nefarious. Stay up to the tabs. Upgrade world's edge. The changes to the dome, drill site, and other points of interest. Uh, read up on map changes. Okay, let's hop over there real quick. Read some map changes. More improved play on the lava side is good, it's kind of empty, but after rotation, there's no particular sticky choke points. Interesting new map mechanic to promote new combat scenarios. Okay, so Eminent Industries to come World's Edge, that's something the fairies, I'm sure. The launch site can now be seen in the west of Dome in a previously unoccupied lava la lava field. So, yeah, it's right here, right? Yeah, New job has four large control rooms to hold in terms of loot. Many squads should feel comfortable landing here, spreading out and pushing across the raised catwalks off the train to be the last team standing. So that's what it looks like. So, th like, there's a difference. So, like, this, you kind of see. This is it currently on live. This is going to be it live tomorrow. So, it's kind of if you want to see the two changes, I guess. When we're standing on launch site, it's new rotation opportunities through the side of the map, and new pathway has been constructed. Through the cliff side, heading to the east side of tree. Oh, so okay, so this is just added to tree. It just added like a bunch of stuff to tree and I made it more like harvestery. Countdown, drill sites been released with countdown. Uh, another lower chime facility with a mysterious purpose. As I have this point of interest is in the bottom forge with a drop of murder, large best walls, and you so So yeah, so it seems like I'm like d very defensive set up here. If you get the first team there, it's cool. So the staging is a smaller point of interest, but lands on the same next to a heavily traveled area inside the map. There's this new job location in places small town used to sit direct below the drain tracks east of Harvester. It should now provide more interesting, much more interesting fights as well as significant more loot. Significant more loot. Instead of a small town in the low pit, design pushes players to to the raised edges of the area, utilizing two more rising walls to connect the train tracks. Cause our gaps, resting drain cars can provide more cover along the tracks as well. We also see the portrait mirage as Mr. Witt has flown his personal personalized ship away from World's Edge for now. So it might come back in another event by uh, Christmas like it did last time. Okay. So is that small town rotate from Mirage Rayage? You would always like drop Mirage, rotate there, then you would rotate to uh, Harvester. Like, this is the pretty typical rotate you would see is Mirage, no name. All uh, right, the little uh, drop up there, and then drop down to Harvester. But now it seems like you can drop here and then Harvester. All right, as well as the kind of the world's edge can be found on the launch site countdown and staging. Activated panel. Activating a panel will start the giant blast wall to cr to rise, creating a defensible platform permanently fortified in the position of whichever team was lucky not to control it first. We find self assaulting a wall that's being defended. There are many pathways. There are pa always pathways through the bottom or around the position pathway. Or if you're watching a verticality, you can always fly right over. So it's kind of like there's a wall. So like I assume this is typically open, and then you can activate it, and then there's a wall. All right. So. Okay, so this is a new pathway. Okay, this is a new pathway that probably goes onto old train tracks. Because I think they removed train tracks, right? Yeah. So no more train tracks. No, no more train, I should say. Uh, yep, added a geyser. Yeah, okay. Let's go back to past notes. New legend, Rampart. Rampart, there we go. Uh, uh, Ramira, sorry if I botched this. Uh, Rama Parque. That's a 21-year-old British Indian, blue-collar, private burdens who just needs a gun and a back backpack full of scrap metal to get by in the dangerous wild west of the Outlands. Parka brings her modest shields and knowledge of heavy weapons such as Sheila. Well, that's what she calls her. Well, that's what she calls her minigun. Passive model loader, increased capacity, faster reloads, LMGs, and minigun. This is really she's, she's gonna be like a minigun user. Like you're gonna want to pick up like Spitfire. Devo or something like that. Because I think Devo's going to ground weapon now if I remember right. 
Uh, model order, so also increase the amount of shots before vacating occurs and improves cooling when using L-Star. That could actually be really good. L-Star with a three times is underrated. I'm not going to lie in a close building fight. Tactical amped cover. Yeah, this has all been all ATs. Everyone knows about this. Uh, five amped walls at a time increases damage of outgoing shots. And it's a one-way barrier, but I think you can destroy it is what I read on the AMA. Uh, you can have three mini guns at a time, which seems really powerful, but we don't know the damage it does, so we'll figure out tomorrow how powerful it is. This is just the new weapon they tease, crafting we already know about. Uh, I'll read about that here. We kind of skim this. Okay, so it's going to be different areas, and it's on King's Cannon and World's Edge. It's, it's cool. Uh, yep, weekly, daily. You can upgrade your own Evo with it. Well, that's a rotation. Are they bringing back the Anvil receiver? That's kind of pog. I like the Anvil receiver. Cool. So it's not going to instantly give it to you. It's going to like have a thing. Armor meta. Season 6, we're inducing some big changes to the way armor works in the game. First off, all all the armor in the game is Evo armor except gold armor. When you find a white, blue, or purple on the ground. So you can so it's Evo, but you can pick up each one. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Build an email. Uh, it can be picked up like normal and continue to be evolved. So meaning scouts and havocs and spitfire and... All snipers can be really powerful this patch. So, so you spawn level zero evil armor, which means you have no armor, right? But then if you do damage, you can get armor. That's cool. I like that a lot. I, that means you can pick up armor, but you have the opportunity to get like purple armor off drop. If you like clap an entire squad by yourself, you have purple armor. So it's gonna. It's funny enough. It's. It's promoting early game aggression, but late game camping. Because you want to get the purple armor, red armor, and stuff like that as fast as humanly possible. Hollow Trays is just something neat. Battle Pass. Uh, I like this G7 scout a lot. G7 skin a lot. I uh, quests. What they had last season. Uh... Some changes to uh, the recon class. Okay, so yeah, I read about this, talked about this a bit. Uh, that's really neat. All recon legends. That means um, right now in comp, Pathfinder is basically only used because he has his ability. But with Bloodhound and Crypto with it, I honestly think Bloodhound and Crypto will be played more than Pathfinder at this point. I think Bloodhound will take over Pathfinder because you have the scan, you have his ultimate. You know, this is really, really powerful. This is just useless. This is not the change Pathfinder needs. Path, if, if you want to make Pathfinder relevant, reduce his grapple cooldown, remove low profile, and decrease zipline cooldown. The base zipline cooldown. Not each time we try to screw your bacon. This is this is the most useless change. Uh, it fills a clay curve role and impact session so the information together but currently their performance leaves a lot to be desired in this patch we wanted to double down on their ultimate being their big moment of being a godlike tracker uh bloodhound already gives up some information to the enemy when they scan or use ultimate it makes an audible sound so we think there's a lot more lot there's room for a lot there's there's room for a lot more power during the ultimate oh my god i just can't read i guess now it gives you more duration when Bloodhound scores a knockdown or kill well, wait, with the ultimate button right out during pieces. All I, all the, I have all the other comes out twice as fast, which is really good. And it's much shorter cooldown, it's really good. This basically makes it more of a tracker when he ults. Instead of just using for the G, you can literally just track entire like these lobbies. Uh, five seconds. Uh so you can get an extension of 5 to 15 seconds based on the remaining duration so I assume if you have like 1 second left and you get a knockdown you get 15 extra seconds 
but if you're like just got a knockdown when it starts you get five seconds and it's like scale in between there oh so it's six seconds uh cooldown when you alt and it's half the cast time so like so before it would take you 1.8 seconds while you're ulting to do it but now it's going to take you less than a second to get it out which is it's literally half the time uh Kato is a particularly interesting recall character the amount of information that he can gather for his team with drones very high up the fact that he has to switch over to his drone leaves him vulnerable and often at a great distance from his team because he has no abilities without his drone we could we figure this out more uh yeah we uh, saw that and it's now it's instant which is really nice instead of having to wait the timer like path and bloodhound can do i assume uh, is more consistent to hit, but doubles hit points. Your own EMP, EMP will now. So teammates, okay, that's normal. That makes sense to me. I think that's fair. And me, okay, so it's jumping TSM. 30 to 60 HP. Hitbox Q of edge length 16. I don't know what this means at all. So it's. There is nerfing that I that dumb it. Uh, no thought, just W key aggro comp. It seems because you can't just what they what you used to do is um you would um portal place the rev totem on the portal and then your crypto would go on drone alt the enemy team while your what your revenant and wraith would run in because they don't care about their shields because you don't take shield damage or get stunned. Right, and so you literally just go in and you just ape them, and then the moment you they kill you, you you would spawn in the portal, and so you just go right back in and kill them. That's it. But it seems like you know they kind of nerfed that a bit. Useless. Uh, useless. Literally, these are not changes they need at all. Loba needs a buff to her tactical to be relevant at all. She just needs an overall buff on everything. Uh, doesn't really matter with this. I I mean it's kind of a nerf, but he's still gonna be ran because his, his bubble is really good. Bangalore is not gonna be ran because of this anymore in comp, because you know she has other issues. This is uh this is just good. This should have happened a long time ago. I think this is more quality of life. Like I feel like this should happen a long time ago. Cossack shouldn't be able to throw an alt thing because it's a projectile, right? Adding energy mix, triple char. Ooh, I think they're bringing. Are they bringing Diva to floor? Move. Okay, I agree with this. Move precision choke makes sense. Uh, peace. I mean, peacekeeper already had it by default. The only thing it didn't have was triple take, and you can toggle it on or off now, which is really good. So, like, if you're any these, you can go PK, and you don't want to use precision choke. It's like you're going to a fight, and you just need to spam it. Uh, and the the hip fire spray kind of expands. Or nine, it's going to supply drop, but it's getting buffs to eleven to twelve damage per per um shot, thirty two magnesium size and one sixty ammo per reserve. Diva on the other hand is going back, and then they're not nerfing the damage it seems, and they're just nerfing the clip size because they was sixty eight on uh, it's like round sixty eight or something like that, fifty three. Somewhere in between 53 and 60, yeah, I'm pretty sure is uh, where it was on uh, when it was a gold weapon. So, full key weapon swaps doesn't really matter. No one ever, like, they're just kind of neat. But, I don't know, like a gold Devo would be cool. Gold Mastiff, gold Triple Take, gold Flatline, gold Float, Volt, which is this new gun they have. Oh, it's kind of like, it's whatever, it's not a huge meta thing. This is cool. Increase pickup from 8 to 12. So now you can carry just more sniper ammo, which is good. And then you can have reduced energy ammo, which I think 20 is the current current one for every other gun. So let's bring it back to where it should be. Every gun, you know, weapon updates. Reduce vertical recoil in the burst mod. Oh my god, it's so good. It's like reducing, so this reduce recoil and burst and how long it takes to burst between each shot. It's good. Now use ammo per shot. 
So this is just basically you get four shots, but you seem fancier you're using two per shot. Increased fire rate from 1.25 to 1.4, which is good. This is going to be a faster uh, sniper now. Increase max size from 5, 6, 7, 8 to 6, 7, 8, 9. So he's having, he's having more shots overall. Uh, yep. Improve recoil controllably. Okay, that's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, did Havoc new with new recoil pattern? Did Havoc's existing recoil pattern had consistent horizontal movement? This means it would either be too difficult to control if there's too much recoil, or, or far too easy to control if there's little, if there's too little recoil. Updating to a new pattern, which is more consistent with the style with existing recoil pattern. So probably similar to like a flatline R301 situation. Just make it more consistent with that, which I'm really good at those guns. So I'm excited because Havoc's so good in my opinion. Uh, uh, this is really good if you hammer points, I guess. Uh, bop, 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 and you literally can get two kills with four shots because it's two shots with the hammer points with it. Mozam. Uh, P2020 increased damage from 13 to 15, decreased hammer point damage multiplier from 2.7 to 2.35, so leave hammer point P2020 damage unchanged in most scenarios. Yeah, I agree because I think 2.7 to 13, like 2.7 of 13. I think it's similar number to 2.35 of 15 because there's you know a difference there but increase make size from 10 13 15 18 then 12 14 16 18 I like this a lot increasing it by two increasing it by uh let's see two one one then not changing it uh, I like that I just feel like p2020 a little buff I don't think it should be powerful but it should be relevant it is to run Slight reduced vertical recoil. Oh yeah, uh, only requires one shield to charge. This is really good. You, like, if you put a gold armor on your Watson, uh, she cannot just beam people with Sentinel now because she will to uh, only have to sacrifice one cell. And because you're playing a Watson, you typically get the one next to you pile on any pile on anyway. So you don't really need those cells at all. Your teammates need them more. You can use them to. Uh, uh, get other players' shields down, forcing them to use their own bats and ultimates to do. So, I like this change a lot. It's not going to be broken or anything like that. It's going to be a little more of a quality of life type of thing. So, you could. Okay, this is really powerful. Because they basically buffed burst mode and nerfed auto mode. But burst mode, on my opinion, has always been a little better because it, um,. You have like no recoil anyway. So basically, uh, drop guns and I'll be red instead of gold. Uh, improve turn stuff. Alterations will make the range to prevent late zones from centering on on player terrain. So we made it harder to predict the zones pull, but they also made it so that it's on uh, playable zones now. Which is, I've seen some end zones in, uh, but I've played it while literally all playable. <sighs> well, that's a bug fix it is. Nothing matters here. <laughs> Hi, friend. I think I do this every patch. Uh, ah, nothing, nothing. It seems really cool. I like the map changes. I like the hero changes. I like the gun changes. It's a vault I'm excited for. I don't know. Season 6 seems cool. Yeah, I like it so far. So, peace.